Start game now. Welcome retro fans to another edition of the Nosewear Gamer. Today we're going to finish our ABCs of retro series. Hooray! During the series we've gone through the letters of the alphabet one at a time and we're finally on to letter Z, reviewing a game that begins with each letter Z as in Zool 2 for your Atari Jaguar, our first Atari Jaguar game here on the Nosewear Gamer. We're joined today by Revenge of Shinobi for the Sega Genesis because ninjas got to hang together. So we're here Going to look at Zool 2, uh, kind of dig the box art, kind of, it's, it's not the greatest, but I like how the uh, girl's whip makes the 2 in Zool 2. Of course, it's a Jaguar game, so they give you a nice little screenshot on the front. I think they probably could have picked a better one than this monolithic head just staring at you. Looking at the back, we got a few action shots. Hey, Chupa Chups. That's right, product placement in this game by the Chupa Chup Candy Corporation that makes suckers. I don't know if that's how you say their name or not, but I think so. So yeah, we get a little bit of action and being one of the later Atari releases, we have multiple languages on the back. So let's go ahead, pop this in our Atari Jaguar and find out if it's worth the original $9.99 price that was on this package. Let's go to the game. After Zool was captured by the Ghostbusters, he went into a witness relocation program and began his rehab. Shortly afterward, he decided to go into the world of ninjas. However, Zool once again encountered a problem supernaturally, had to split himself into two, and now we have two ninjas and Zool 2 for your Atari Jaguar. Actually, I made that up. Let's read the back of the box. It's cruel and unusual punishment. Zool and his daring and lovely sidekick Zeus face a challenge that would wilt the knees of even the toughest ninja. The nth dimension is under attack from the evil forces of Cruel. Where is Skeletor? Our heroes must restore the nth dimension to equilibrium and exile Mental Block and his mind-numbing cronies before imagination is wiped out of existence. Yeah, Zool is a side-scrolling platformer. It is a free-roaming platformer. You can go either way. It doesn't uh, freeze when you move to the right. It is for one or two players, but I do believe the two-player is an alternating, not simultaneous. I'm not sure because I didn't find my second Jaguar controller during this review, but one of the options you can pick is play a two-player game where you share a controller. That, so that kind of leads me to believe that is alternating only. That is a cool option though that, that you could play a two-player game and share a controller. I thought that was kind of unique. So yeah, it is a side-scrolling platformer. You have six worlds to go through. Every world has three different levels in it. And at the end of each world, there is a boss. Basically, this is kind of the Atari Jaguar version of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, even though there are some great differences in these two games. It is from the year 1994. It's brought to us by Gremlin Interactive and is based on the Amiga game of the same name. And before this was the first Zool, which was also on the Amiga, but that version was ported to several systems, including the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, and Game Boy. However, this version was pretty limited. The only home console it appeared on is the Atari Jaguar. So if you want to play Zool 2, you will need an Atari Jaguar system. There you go. Atari doing what Nintendo, for Zool 2 at least. Graphically speaking, I think Zool 2 looks pretty good. It is a very, very colorful game. There is a lot of icons on the screen and it doesn't really suffer from much slowdown at all. It has some parallax scrolling to go with it. Some of the backgrounds are more detailed than others. Not all of them look as good, but it really does kind of pop out of the screen and I think it definitely looks better than most 16-bit games out there. Uh, and there's also a nice little pre-rendered kind of Zool 2 animation at the very beginning that you're forced to watch every time you start the game. Hooray! Let's hear it for forced cutscenes. Anyway, going on. The music is also pretty cool too. I really like the kind of techno, kind of electric vibe it gives throughout the game, though it's very interesting. As Zool 2 is split into six worlds, each one of the six worlds has a soundtrack that goes along with it. However, once the soundtrack starts for a world, it doesn't stop until you get to the 
end of the whole world. So for each of the three levels, it just keeps going on and on, even in between levels. I thought that was kind of an uh, interesting thing. I don't know if that's a common feature for Amiga games, but at least for this one on the Atari Jaguar, it just kept going and going and going and going until you got through the world. But it was pretty good music, and I didn't mind the repetitive nature of it. And I thought the sound effects were pretty effective. I thought they really kind of, you could hear a lot of the little chinks and chunks when you go and collect all the icons all over the place. And you'll be hearing a lot of that too when you play Zool 2 on your Atari Jaguar. The object of each level in Zool 2 is not just to get to the end, but in between the start and the finish is to collect as many items as you can. On the bottom left portion of your screen, you will see a number that slowly goes up and an arrow pointing to where the end is at. The problem is, is you need to get that number up to 99. Now, I don't think that it means 99% of the items on the levels, as some review says. I think it just is a general kind of like get up to the 99% of what we require you to get, if that makes sense. I think you can actually collect more icons well beyond what would be the 100% icon level if you're going to do that. But there's icons scaled all throughout the levels, all different shapes and sizes, and you're definitely going to need to get as many as you can. And it depends on the difficulty. Uh, in the easy mode, you have to collect most of them. In the normal mode, you're going to have to collect all of them and some hidden ones or break some items to get one. And then the hard mo mode is the most difficult where you're going to have to kill a lot of guys and get their icons because sometimes when you defeat one of your enemies, they drop icons, kind of like a pinata dropping candy. On the easy level, you do have eight lives. Normal, you have six. And hard, you have four. I definitely recommend playing on the easy mode. This game is a very difficult game, especially later on. Thankfully, there are several codes online if you want infinite health or if you want infinite lives or if you want to pick which level you want to start on of the six. This was something that I found almost mandatory to enjoy the game because otherwise this game would be almost way too difficult to master unless you have a ton of time on your hand. So I definitely would recommend looking into the codes, but I did and I had a good time when I put the codes in. You can also choose how your inertia is acting in the game. In the options menu, you, you can choose to turn it on or off. If it's on, your character will go farther when he tries to stop, and of course, if it's off, he will stop more on a dime. Uh, Control-wise, it's a kind of interesting setup. One button has you to fire your kind of ninja stars or whatever they are that are coming out of you. One button activates a smart bomb, one of the items you can collect, and the other one operates the jump, except your D-pad also operates the jump, which makes for a very interesting time in playing the game, especially when you climb on walls. Your ninja will stick to walls whenever he comes really close to him, sometimes even when you don't want him to. And when you have to jump off the walls, you have to push up or diagonal up on the D-pad. You cannot push the jump button. This was a very bizarre mechanic to me, and I really wish they allowed me just to use the jump button to jump off those walls. Also, there's going to be many times that you jump because you're pushing up and you're not meaning to. So it's one of the kind of weird things. I guess this is kind of standard fare for some of the Amiga style games. I'm not sure I'm not a big fan of Amiga. I just haven't had much exposure to it. But it just on a home console kind of felt kind of weird. I do kind of wish that they didn't do this. But Zool moves extremely, extremely fast. Now you can pick at the beginning of each level whether you want to be a boy or a girl. They do have some different properties. The main one is Zool can destroy uh, barriers that are above his head and the girl can destroy barriers below and sometimes she even whips out a whip when she's in close combat even though it doesn't seem to make much difference between uh, throwing your stars or whipping out the whip either way. So basically you're looking at do you want to be able to break things with your head or jump on barriers below and of course that opens up different paths for everyone. As I said, the game moves incredibly fast. Faster than most Sonic games. Well, I, okay, when a Sonic game really gets cooking and they're having to go through all the tubes, yes, you move faster than this game. But as a pacing level, once your ninja starts moving, they are going very, very quickly. And it's very hard to stop them right away. And every, the action is really fast and furious in the game, especially when you jump up. When you jump up, you can hit one of the buttons and do a twirling thing that can help you defeat the enemies. You'll see me doing it a lot in this review because it's very helpful because enemies will pop all over the place and they respawn constantly. So the good news is if you need to get a health heart from one of the enemies, just wait until they respawn and keep on attacking them until one shows up. Speaking of health, you are given a life bar with five different bars of life on top and those will be very, very helpful. If this was a one hit wonder game, again, I would not like this game at all because it can be very difficult and you're definitely going to be recharging your health. There was many times in the game where I stopped for a minute just to regain as much health as I could before I moved on 
because I want to get to a next checkpoint. There is checkpoints in each of the three levels per world and you will learn to love them, especially later on in the game, so you won't have to backtrack. Now there is a couple big problems with the gameplay that I should mention. One is that if you don't collect your 99% uh, percent items or whatever that 99 represents and you get to the end, you are going to have to wait to exit the level. There's this little bouncing ball that you can hit once you hit the 99 mark, but if you don't hit the 99 mark, it won't do anything and you're going to have to backtrack. However, sometimes the backtracking will cut you off at a certain point and you won't be able to get any farther. So either you have to spend a lot of time hitting enemies trying to gain icons or you're going to have to turn off the system and restart the level because there are times where your path is blocked off from behind you and you will need those items. So sometimes that can be quite the bummer. It didn't happen to me too often. Most of the time when I got to the end, I did have enough items, but there was once or twice where I had to go back and beat up some of the enemies. Thankfully, I didn't have to totally shut off the game for that. Another problem is some of the jumps can be really, really, really touchy, and you're going to have to kind of really time it just right, practice it many times, and really trying to figure out how can you get up to that point. Maybe you need to hit an invisible level. Maybe you have to even get hit a little bit so you can jump up just a little bit extra, but it there, sometimes it could just drive you just a little bit nuts but again the game is so fast and furious that you will just want to say hey I can do this give me one more try and you'll probably go back and do it again again this is maybe not for everybody some people this might frustrate too much but it for me it just presented another challenge for me to take on it is a fairly family friendly game you do have a little bit of mild kind of ninja action but it's all very cartoony enemies just poof away it is very surrealistic in the backgrounds everything is kind of weird and bizarre but I think it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't recommend this for kids, not because of violence or anything like that, but just because it can be such a difficult game and it does take a little bit getting used to. The game on eBay is fairly cheap as far as Atari Jaguar games go. A loose copy goes from 10 to $15. A complete copy goes from 20 to $25 and a new copy was going for about $40. And there were several new copies out there of this game. I think this is one of the games that they just made a ton of. So if you really want to get a new copy, $40 is not too bad for a retro video game when you're talking about a brand new version, even though mine cost $9.99 originally, but I ended up getting it used. So um, how did I like the game? Was it enjoyable? And where would I rank it? Well, you know what? I actually had a blast with Zool. I think the word to best describe playing Zool is refreshing. It is not like any other platformer I have played. The action is so fast, you're constantly getting all these icons, so it kind of has the casino effect. You know, it, there's like this effect where people go into a casino and they hear all the slot machines going off at the same time. It kind of builds the excitement. And this game kind of has that effect when you're collecting all the icons on the screen and because it moves so fast even if you die like you don't hit a jump just right and there's lots of jumps that are very frustrating you have to hit them just right but because the game moves so quickly you can get back there pretty fast it just kept going and going and it's it's one of those games where it's like okay one more try i can get this jump okay one more try i can okay one more try i can get this jump now there the items were kind of useful you can get several items including as i said a smart bomb where it'll blow up all the enemies on screen there's one that splits your character in two there's a shield that you're going to love because it makes you invincible there was a timer you could collect but i really didn't need it that much i didn't find myself running out of time uh, you can power up your shots, but that was kind of worthless because after you died, it went away and it really didn't do much. You can also refill your health by finding the Chupa Chups logo. By the way, trivia, did you know the Chupa Chups logo was done by Salvador Dali? There you go, learn something new today. But I had a lot of fun, even though by level four, especially the second level, level four, it got kind of frustrating. Uh, there's this part in level four too, where you're riding on the snake and you have to stay on him as he goes through all these obstacles. And I just wasn't able to get past it. And I went to some of the future levels, including level five, where you have to create these uh, ice cubes by hitting snowflakes, but they melt and your aim has to be dead on. And aim is not something that this game does very well it shoots straight ahead but if you want to get something you can't always just lean and get it you have to kind of jump and shoot and then it becomes difficult and then in the last world there was just 
oh, it was just bizarre all over the place, and it was almost near impossible. It's a game that you would have to dedicate a lot of time to if you're going to complete it. But every time I played this game, I had a good time, even though it was kicking my rear end. It's one of those games, and I don't think it's for everybody, but I think if you're a Jaguar owner, you should try and look it up at least one time during the system's life, it, especially if you can get it on the cheap, you know. It's not one of the most collectible games, so you should be able to find it for a fairly good deal. So yeah, I would recommend it for Jaguar owners not going out of your way to get it, but try and come across it at some point. It'll be lots of fun. You might not beat it, but you'll enjoy going through this. So where am I going to rank this? Well, you know what? It is one of these games where even though it's not as well made as other games, I enjoyed it more than several other games. Now, I didn't enjoy it more than Jackal, but I know this might be controversial and it depends on who you are. Different people will disagree. But for me personally, I enjoyed this more than I did Blackthorn on the 32X, which is very interesting. I think in a way, Blackthorn was a better made game than Zool 2, but I couldn't ha help but get a smile on my face when I played Zool 2 more so than I did with Blackthorn. And Blackthorn became repetitive where this game kept changing up the levels. One minute you're riding a snake, but previously you were in this toot and common kind of uh, King Tut kind of stage. And then you're, you know, you're collecting candy, you're fighting sugar cube bosses. It just had a lot of variety to it if you stuck with it. So there you go. Zool 2 is my new number 13 game out of 32 games I've ranked. So yeah, we are finally done with the ABCs of Retro Series. I do have a couple changes to announce. As you can tell, my list of ranked games is getting really big. So from now on, I'm going to try ranking games by system only instead of against each other because it's just becoming too hard to manage the monstrous list but who knows once in a while i might do a top 10 of all the games i reviewed or bottom 10 as well you know tax avoiders will be there so thanks again for giving me a little part of your day i hope you enjoyed this video if you did would you consider liking and subscribing and tell your friends you can like me on facebook you can follow me on twitter and you can shout really loud outside your door and if i'm close enough i might just hear it Anyways, thanks again for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on the No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody.